Hello comrades, Thomas Harbro here today with probably one of the final episodes of our little Seven Kingdoms 2 playthrough, that's right. I hope you guys have been enjoying this one as much as I've enjoyed playing it. Again, this is one of my favorite games. I love this game. <laughs> it's such a classic and I still play it to this day. That's right. Oh look, we just got a Roman hero, Manlius Julius Aquilus, I guess is how his name is pronounced. And we just had an earthquake damage our buildings, I imagine it was over here. Well, yes, I was absolutely correct, it was over here. As you can see, I finally managed to get my city built in the middle of that mountain range. It was a little bit of a bitch, but I made it happen. You know me, I never give up. <laughs> That's right. So, we're researching special units. This would be an example of a special unit and ladies and gentlemen what do we notice about this particular individual right here oh it is that not only is he a special unit but I did not build him nor did we have an event pop up at the bottom so what that tells me is that this is an enemy spy check this shit out boom spy Nea Servilius Agrippa from Aulius's kingdom has been covered and executed that's right <laughs> I'm not stupid, you yellow bastard. Keep your shit to yourself. Sweet. Now we're allied with yellow. We're actually allied with yellow and green, and we're friendly with purple. That's right. Yes, yes. As you can see here, they've added in the HD edition a little relation level to show, like, how much you like people and how much you don't like people and all that stuff. So, yes, yes, yes. Nice little things like that. Sisamos. Sisamos. I don't really need that. But yes, yeah, so that means we are friendly with the people directly uh, next to us. So, that's a good thing. Not having to worry about constantly going to war and all that. Yes, yes. Now, normally in this game, I'm a little bit more warlike. But I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of been chilling just a little bit here. Uh, and not trying to pick fights with anybody because... I don't know. I don't know. I always like to build up a real strong, powerful military. And as you can see here, according to this, we have the third most powerful in, uh, uh, military behind uh, brown and yellow. That's right. And it's all pretty close. Like, if you look at military score here, that shows us that we're all pretty much in the same ballpark, aside from orange and green and blue, who are all pretty, pretty weak all things considered but because we're in an alliance with orange and uh, green it can pretty much be said that their military score is added to ours in a sense in a sense now it does seem like green is in some sort of crippling power structure right now because they've lost they've already lost their king now in this game when a king dies you can always just uh, promote one of your generals to fill the slot it's not always the best idea, but sometimes it's the only, it, it, it literally is the only thing to keep you in the game. Um, and then if you run out of all your generals, you're pretty much fucked, man. <laughs> to put it bluntly and to put it lightly, you're fucked. There's not much else you can do. Um, let's see, if we can get this guy's combat up a little bit more, I'll actually be able to send him on his way to go start a new village somewhere. That's right, because it seems like Greeks are the most populous on this uh, map. There have been a lot of Greek towns, or at least maybe we've just incorporated a lot of Greeks. A lot of Greeks and Normans. Again, you get to the point where you can just kind of tell who's who. For example, this is a Celt town. Over here is a Norman town. Over here is a Greek town. Over here is... Bregmalair. <laughs> and again, that's probably one of the more interesting play styles of this game is playing the Frythans. That's right. They're always a little bustly bunch of uh, monsters. I don't really know how else to put that. Now, what's really cool about the Seat of Powers that I was telling you guys about uh, for like two episodes ago, uh, when we were actually talking about this right here, the Seat of Power, where you can summon your god and so on and so forth, is if there is another player in the game of a certain faction. For example, if there's a Japanese player in the game, 
then when their king dies, they will drop the Japanese scroll of power. And if I have a Japanese citizen or general or someone, I can take that Japanese person and send them and go pick up that scroll of power. And then I will be able to build a seat of power for a particular civilization, meaning I thus gain their, uh, their ra the uh, civilization bonus, and I can also invoke their greater being. It doesn't happen very often, but it is there, so it's a pretty cool little thing. Now, uh, when you just play it around a little bit, if you know what I mean. All right, let's arm these towers and get us some more men. What's Roma's population? 86? All right, so we've got plenty. We've got plenty of mood. mood. We've got plenty of food and money. One other thing I guess I want to show off in this game is... Let's build an N. I don't really have a whole bunch of room. You can pick smaller building sets, by the way. I always like to pick large just because it makes the cities look bigger. Um, playing on small, though, is probably smarter because it means you can see more. <laughs> so, I mean, there's, there's that. There's that for sure. We're going to leave this factory up. We're going to put it on auto. Despite the fact that Rome no longer has any materials in the area, there will be deposits that pop up from time to time. It leads to uh, people fighting over resources because the resources do not pop up very often. But still, it's, it's, it's quite the struggle. All things considered, it, it becomes pretty difficult like trying to not get murdered by your opponents. So anyway, with the inn, this allows you to buy mercenary units, obviously. Now, they're, they tend to be better than just regular units, but they're also very expensive. Like just this one Celt Infantry alone is 518. And then look, we here we have on the secondary the Cloak and Dagger. These are spies. There'll be spies up here, there'll be warriors up here. So, yeah, 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 that's pretty much all I want to show you with the end. <laughs> I mean, there's, like, you'll have heroes come through your ends, and you can hire heroes to fight your battles and whatnot. You'll see ones like Julius Caesar and all sorts. I mean, you know, with all the varying factions in the game, it's all pretty well represented. You've also got war machines in the game. They're really expensive to maintain, but they're super powerful, like massive cannons and... Um, catapults and ballistae and so on and so forth. There's all sorts of different crazy war machines in the game. Let's actually build a, a, a Scula Equitatus. There we go. Alright. And we can actually build a, a Norman Stable as well. We'll build it right here next to Bari. Yes, there we go. Alright. And Estable. Estable! There we go. It looks like the Tower of London... Oh, the... Is, that's what it is, right? The Tower of London? I'm pretty sure that's what it is. <laughs> anyway, we're going to mix it right there. We're going to make it to where it'll, it can recruit out of Bari. Alright, alright, alright. See, our army's looking pretty pretty smexy, if I do say so myself. It says we're still third in military, but I find that hard to believe. Whatever. No big deal. What I'm going to try to do now, though, is I'm going to try to merge the kingdom with the green guys. And see if they'll let us purchase their throne for 10000 no, he refuses to do that. Oh, you're a risky, risky man, man. How about 20,000? Oh, you refuse that? How about 35? Ooh. This dude, he's got some pride. All right. 50,000, that's my final offer. Oh, all right, he refuses. All right, well, never mind then. I was trying to buy green. That would have been nice. What about brown? You think brown? What about orange? I wonder if Orange will let me buy him for fifty thousand. Really? How about how about how about seventy-five thousand? <laughs> Jesus Christ! These these people are. Yeah, God, they're so. They're sticklers. They're a bunch of sticklers because they're not at war. That's really what's going on. Is because no one's at war with anybody. No one's really concerned about <laughs> losing their kingdom, as it were. Oh, look at this guy. He's got eighty-five leadership and fifty-six combat and his Chinese infantry. I don't think there's any Chinese cities on this game, on this map. I don't want to, I don't want to buy a Chinese guy and not be able to implement his, uh, you know, his civilization bonus, man. And yeah, no, he's not. But look, a new mineral deposit popped up here. Mm, yeah, we might have to go capitalize on that before our opponents do. 
what city is basically not doing anything at all? I think all my cities pretty much are, aside from Shimodate here. Shimodate is certainly not. Just some tower of... Oh, no, they've got 30 workers doing something. Now I guess most of them working in the mines. Hmm, interesting. Okay, well, I guess all my cities are pretty much occupied -oed. Hmm, hmm, no bueno. No bueno at all. Hmm, eh, whatever, whatever. Look at this. Look at this Greek village, man. Like, their whole population, aside from six people, are working. I love to see industry. Oh, it's so sexy when it works out the way you want it to. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. All right. What else do we need? Well, I guess that's really all we can do. I mean, that's that's about it for for this. We could take this guy over here. Ooh, or we could take him over here. Let's take let's take this mineral deposit. See, three more just popped up, like back to back, man. Oh, goodness gracious. We'll take this guy, Sophanes. 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 I don't know how to pronounce his damn name. <laughs> some Greek pronounced name. That's what it is. Oh, we can even build some Greek cavalry. See, it seems like all the factions I've actually got here are all uh, cavalry based. Like, special schools are really just another word for cavalry in this game. Um, aside from a couple of units, like the Vikings have the berserk. They have like axe thrower guys. Um, stuff like that. But still, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and build these. Their cap cavalry is just way stronger than just base infantry, especially if they get trained up fast enough. Oh, also, this game has flamethrowers called Spitfires. <laughs> if that's not awesome, I don't know what is. Oh, look at this guy. He'll be a good... He can be a good leader. Get his leadership. Oh, shit. A Mage Tor has fired at Aulis' kingdom. A Mage Tor is basically uh, a magical tower that can be built by the ex of them that uh it's it's pretty much like a nuke it, it does a shit ton of damage and as we can see here the ex of them are fighting against these uh persian soldiers this on all this is Aulus's kingdom that they're currently fighting and they're losing pretty deftly i mean they're pretty heavily outnumbered plus as you can see here Aulus is <laughs> Running around with frickin' a tr uh, double shooting ballista. So there's not a whole lot they can do against that. The, the X of them have been really small in this game anyway. They're bringing in some reinforcements, but they're going to lose. Like, I mean, there, there's really nothing they're going to be able to do here. They're going to lose this. Um, especially against Aulis. Aulis is technically the most powerful uh, country in the game, according to my little military rank in here. I find that hard to believe. Or whatever. He does have catapults. Siege weapons and weapons of war are pretty damn powerful, all things considered. So I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past him, to be absolutely honest. One thing I will say though, is that my men are better trained. It's just going and looking at some of these guys, you can see they have lower health. So that means their combat ratings are probably pretty low. Oh, this is a pretty intense little fight going on here. Oh shit. The oh, well, this ex of unbetrayed his brothers and joined Aldous's kingdom. What a dick! Wow, way to way to be a way to be a chode, man. Just like abandoning your teammates in the middle of combat. What's wrong with you? Well, oh, good God. Anyway, all right, we're about to build Fort Thassos. Declare war on. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, fuck you, Blue Quasin Kingdom. Is that seriously out of range? Ugh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. See, that's why half the time you really just need to wait for the dam, the town to get built before you build the camp or the fort or whatever it is you're building. Otherwise, you'll just waste money and time. Alright. Let's build a wall around Thassos. As long as it doesn't rebel, I'm happy. But anyway, this has been another episode of The Rumbling Romans with Seven Kingdoms 2. I'm probably not going to do any more. I know you got a lot of, most of the most of most of the comrades don't care too much for older games like this and for Seven Kingdoms. Unfortunately, which is a shame. They're totally missing out on a great game. Um but uh yeah, so it's the, the views don't really reflect, you know, viewership. I want people to be watching. If they're not watching, then, you know, it kind of beats the purpose. But anyway, this has been Commissar Bro. Playing Seven Kingdoms 2. It's been a fucking blast, man. It has been a fucking blast. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time.